Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They, they immediately told him about her. <clears throat> he approached, grasped her hand, and held, helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. An exorcist is defined as a person who expels or attempts to, to expel a supposedly evil spirit from a person or a place. The exorcist performs a ritual called exorcism, which comes from the Greek word exorcismos, which literally means to bind by oath or to adjure someone or something. I first encountered this word from the 1970s novel and later horror movie entitled The Exorcist, starring Linda Blair as a demon-possessed girl. I've always thought once that the horrifying creature which possessed Linda Blair's character was called The Exorcist because the title seemed to sound scary and evil, only to find out that The Exorcist referred to in the movie was the Jesuit priest who performs an exorcism or a ritual of casting out and binding the evil spirit that disturbed the young victim in the movie. The church still appoints priests to serve as exorcists in a diocese in case of, spirit, of supernatural disturbances that would afflict a person or a place. The 1983 Code of Canon Law or the Official Book of Laws and Legal Principles in the Roman Catholic Church states that the bishop can officially give a mandate to a priest or a specifically trained lay person in the performing of the right of exorcism due of the personal qualities of piety, knowledge, prudence, and integrity of life. Maunang dunay special gayud nga ministry ang usakapari o laigo nga mangadji sa pagampo sa exorcism kay gitahasan siya sa obispo nga mahimong exorcist sumala sa iyang personal nga pagsaksi sa kristohanong kinabuhi o kamatuuran sa iyang pagtuo o kaalam ni ining maong pamaagi sa ritual. Not every priest can perform an official exorcism but may be called to do an anointing for the spiritually afflicted or to pray over a person with spiritual anxieties that are not necessarily leading to a paranormal diabolical infestation or phenomenon. Sa kanhing nga parokya, diin ako na destino sa Sambuanga, daga na sa Ugigayon, diin bisan dili ako ang opisyal nga exorcist sa diocese, apan kundunay nang inahanglan og pagampo o pangadji, kay gisamok sila sa spirituhanong kabalaka, o panghuna-una o disposisyon, isip o sa kapari, bisan pa man dili takos panagsa, apan gikinahanglan kining mga tawhana o pagampo, aron malingkawas sila sa unsa may nakapasamok nila sa kinahiladman sa ilang kahintang. Praying over a disturbed person and sometimes blessing a haunted place can seem pretty easy 
if you follow the ritual and the prescribed prayers. But the challenge is more on encouraging the afflicted person to seek emotional and spiritual support from one's loved ones and friends, while also motivating that person to be more open in receiving the sacraments of the church, not only for their protection, but also to experience indeed God's intervention and healing presence amidst whatever disturbances they may experience in life right now. Sometimes, places needed to be exorcised too when they have been considered containing an atmosphere of trauma due to a past event or tragedy connected to that place. It's sometimes easier and much more convenient for a typical priest to dismiss a disturbed person as just psychologically distressed or matod pa sa pulong sa usakapari, wala na giyawaan, gigutom rana, maunang pakana aron dili siya magwild diha. But some disturbances have a deeper root than just emotional stress and lack of appetite. That is why we still need the ministry of exorcism from time to time. In today's gospel, we hear of Jesus' ministry of healing and curing those who were afflicted with evil spirits and supernatural disturbances. While some of these illnesses mentioned in the reading may possibly be psychosomatic or neurotic in nature, doubtless that Jesus attended to their immediate need. This is to underline the fact that Jesus came to cure not only physical, germ-induced illnesses as a modern doctor would do in his hospital or clinic. Jesus also came to provide a holistic, complete healing of the heart and soul, which is the seat of the human person's essence, where at times that person can experience imbalance, anxiety, and psychospiritual distress. Here, Jesus acts as an exorcist. He casts out whatever distresses that person's mind and soul and makes that person whole or balanced once more. Sickness is considered at most philosophically a physical evil, a privation of health and well-being. Jesus' casting out of evil spirits is also his way of purging the evil or privation of emotional wellness and spiritual integrity caused by many influences and possible doorways. At times, these doorways that cause spiritual affliction can be traced to a person's exposure to the occult, like perhaps a Ouija board, or playing divination games, or, or spirit of the glass, or kanang paggamit sa habak. But there are also other ways in which someone can be possessed by an influence of evil in one's life, like abusive family relationships, sinful habits, unresolved anger issues, substance abuse, vices, and everything else. Whatever evil may come in our lives, in our relationships with others, in the way we could hurt each other by word or action, in how we destroy one another's trust, we need exorcism too. We need Christ's healing power through his word in the scriptures, through the sacraments we receive, through the advice and counsel of a priest or someone in the community who can guide our way out of whatever oppresses or binds us spiritually and psychologically. The demons to be exorcised are not only of a paranormal, malicious nature imagined in the movies. Sometimes there are also personal demons tormenting our hearts and distracting our peace of mind. And for this, we need Christ's healing, forgiveness, and peace to cast them out.